The media and the government want you to believe the official story that 20-year-old Thomas Crooks tried and failed to assassinate uh, President Trump. That was that he was a lone gunman, right? That's the official story. There's now overwhelming evidence to overturn that official story and raise serious questions that at the very least he had help and at the most there were multiple shooters. We spoke to an eyewitness who was in the bleachers behind President Trump. She witnessed Corey being shot and killed and saw guns, gunshots hitting multiple locations. And we're going to share that interview with you here in a moment. Um, it's shocking. It's heartbreaking. She's an amazing woman. She comes from an amazing family. And we're going to hear her story in a second. It'll blow your mind. Now, first, though, moments ago, the House of Representatives subpoenaed the director of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle. Here is from Congress of the United States of America and the House of Representatives and the Committee on Oversight and Accountability uh, and uh, Congressman Comer's office saying that, wait a minute, you were going to appear testify before Congress on Monday about this, the failure of the Secret Service, but now it looks like Alejandro Mayorkas, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, has stepped in and will not allow her to testify. What? Really? What is Alejandro Mayorkas trying to prevent her from saying in front of Congress? Well, it's interesting on the same day that DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, says we're going to do our own investigation, meaning Congress, we don't really need you. You don't need her. We've got this. So you need to step back. She actually doesn't need a congressional testimony. She doesn't need to be photographed or videotaped answering real questions we're on this one. Someone in the chat says, Clayton forgot to shave today. No, I didn't. I intentionally didn't shave today. You want to hear a story? The other day I shaved and cut my nose oh, wide open and yes. blood was pouring for like 20 minutes or no, like an hour. I couldn't stop it. Yes. So, I had to run to the drugstore and get him a styptic pen. So I, I'm like, I'm wait, I'm holding off on the shaving for a few days. So he's rocking the five yeah, o'clock shadow I got the on five purpose. Yeah. It's, it's not, a, it's not unintentional. Thanks to the chat for being eagle eyed though. I appreciate that. So now according to the subpoena, Kimberly Cheadle was set to testify. She's not any longer. Um, and so now the, you know, as you point out, Congress is saying, we're going to take matters into our own hand. We're going to subpoena. We want all of the diagrams, photos, aerial information, communication that you guys had on the day and leading up to this event. Um, fascinating. So we'll see if we get answers from Congress on this. Including what was the plan? We know what was executed. We know where people were and where people were not Quite obviously not, right? Yeah. But was there a different plan? Uh, because there are some people, including Dan Bongino, who was former Secret Service agent, saying, oh, no, there was a plan to have people on that roof. So what happened? She, what? Stood, she stood them down. Right. We now know she stood them down. She, they, they were told to stand down and not go on that roof for their safety because of a sloping roof, which is, okay, that's now her responsibility. That's her fault. Why did she ask them to stand down and not go on that sloped roof? Right. Which everyone is mocking now, of course. So you need the to ask yourself. The memes are everything, though, about the slope. I'm at least yeah. having fun with that. I hope you are, too. Yeah, if you're watching on Twitter, you know, you see the cows on slanted roofs and so forth. They right. have the cows and all sorts of things on slighted, slighted roofs. Um, so anyway, I want to know why my orcas doesn't want her to testify. Why? What is Alexand uh, Alejandro Mayorkas trying to hide? by not having her go in front of Congress. And new video has just surfaced from the deep state, Satan herself, Victoria Newland. Here she is just a few hours before the shooting, guaranteeing that Trump won't be president because a surprise is coming. Our economy, et cetera. So I don't think that Donald Trump is gonna be president. So if that's what Putin's betting on, he's gonna get um, a unhappy surprise, I think. That is that is uh, number one. Hmm, an unhappy okay. surprise. What could that be? I mean, she seems very psychic. She knew the Nord Stream pipeline would not go into effect. That's strange. She's great at predictions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if we should hire her for some kind of, you know, Madam Crystal Ball events. That'd yeah, if be you funny. Wanted, she might be fun at parties. She'd be great. And yeah, it'd be like, call me now. What was her name? The uh, the old, uh, uh, the woman you call the hotline. Call me now. Anyway, I don't Victoria. Know. Anyway. I'd be checking her family tree to see if that shooter came from... Uh, like if he's anywhere in her branches. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I mean, other than the fact that he was in a BlackRock commercial inside a school, mm-hmm. and then BlackRock, of course, we know their, their, their connections to the federal government and the CIA. So other than that connection, who knows? But again, they want you to believe that he's the guy, right, Thomas Crooks. They want you to believe that he's the shooter, right? Meanwhile, CBS is reporting that a detonator was found on Crooks' body right next to where his body was shot and killed on that rooftop. His parents also called police on the day of the rally. Really? He's missing? He's 20 years old. So we're learning the shooter's parents called law enforcement on the day of the rally to say they couldn't find their son. We know they're cooperating with law enforcement, and this comes as a new photograph obtained by local station WPXI shows a detonator device found next to Thomas Matthew Crook's body after the attempted assassination. Crooks had explosives inside his car, found parked near the rally, and bomb-making materials inside his home. The alarming photo raises questions about whether Crooks had other plans as he opened fire. Less than 200 yards away from the rally stage while positioned on a rooftop, which the Secret Service says was within the perimeter, perimeter delegated to local law enforcement. And now we're learning that police knew about Crooks three hours before the shooting. He came in with a rangefinder, and police and Secret Service said they'd keep an eye on him. They were aware of him. And new video from D.C. Drano this morning reveals the shooter was walking around one hour beforehand. Take a look. So you can see him here in the background there, walking around, scouting out lo- the location, apparently. This is one hour beforehand, walking around, looking up, security. What's this guy doing here? But that's an hour beforehand, one hour ahead of time. Uh, And police didn't engage him. He was allowed to leave the area. Where's his gun, by the way, at this point? Well, he was actually allowed to leave the area and only return. It was able to come back with a backpack. Eventually climbing on the ladder near that HVAC unit onto the structure behind the buildings and then onto the roof. Well, some reporting says that he went through security check he did and security go. said, well, let's finder. keep an eye on him. But then they didn't. But right. And let's, you know, the same way you keep an eye on your kid when you're at a barbecue. So you bring a range finder, which is not maybe altogether that crazy. I mean, after all, you've got a lot of individuals who, you know, are using it to be able to see closer. Sure. So that, you know, you want to like you wear, you know, use binoculars at a yeah. at a at a musical or something like that, right? To get a closer view of the, the stage. Like at the opera, those. Well, yeah, like the, like the little monocle thing. Old. Sure. And when I go to a concert at a festival these days, they open your backpack and they check it. You're going into yeah. a pre- presidential convention with a backpack that's not checked? Well, interesting piece about the backpack story. And I spoke to an eyewitness on this who said they were told and sent emails before their arrival, no bags. Not allowed to bring bags. No bags. And eyewitnesses were seeing other people were bringing bags and saying, well, they're going to be upset because they're going to be they're going to have their bags taken. Like, why are you bringing a bag? We got emails saying explicitly no bags. And then they were able to bring bags right through security. They didn't take people's bags at all. They hardly even looked through them. This is unbelievable. So what's going on here with the bag searches? They received emails saying no bags. People showed up with bags and were allowed to bring bags in. Okay, that's a huge lapse. I'd love to hear Kim Cheadle's uh, response to that. Why did they make that sudden change? Why was that suddenly allowed to happen when they had received precautionary emails ahead of time? I wouldn't bring a bag if I saw that. I'd be like, no, they're going to take my backpack. Right. Right. So why even bring it? I mean, Clayton's been known to smuggle burritos into a movie places yeah. yeah, where we're not supposed to bring in food. Yeah. He has done that. But not a rifle. But not in a backpack. In his pocket. Now I just <laughs> now I just carry burritos in my pocket, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> all right. So now we have new video. New video <laughs> evidence also shows the shots fired at the hydraulics that were coming from the back left side of the stage. People reported the shots hit. And then you can see like a gas exploding. People are wondering where all this like mist and gas was coming from. Now we know that that was hitting this hydraulics behind the stage. And then it created like a bit of a cloud there. So this is coming from the left side. Um, And you can see on the left side of your screen, this person ducking down as well. And these shots coming from the left side, according to eyewitnesses. And we have eyewitnesses saying these initial shots came from the direction of the gymnastics building that we talked about here yesterday on the show, which is about 400 yards away. And again, this is also in the same direction as the water tower from from that direction to that stage where that hydraulic section was hit. And where that other when those other bystanders were also hit behind the stage area where President Trump was speaking. 
over 400 yards away. A building, by the way, the gymnastics building that was vacant on Saturday and which had the same line of sight as the water tower. Multiple eyewitnesses now say the water tower direction. Shots were fired from that location. Multiple eyewitnesses. And they had been right by the fence where the other shooter was. There was one I heard in the water tower. There was one by the fence. And still, obviously, initial reports. But what we do now... First crack of the gunfire, and I just screamed, it's the sniper, it's the sniper. And he was firing down toward the water tower. That's what we're hearing. Gentlemen behind me, we were... I was one seat. He was to the right of me. He could see the sharpshooter on the behind Trump. He said the sharpshooter shot to the left. He killed the gentleman in the water tower here. CNN almost had a heart attack yesterday when U.S. Army sniper Corey Mills was on CNN and suggests that the July 13th assassination attempt on Trump could have been a setup. And he also pointed out the water tower and Kay Baldwin like flipped out. She's like, oh, my God, what? what? You're saying this was a setup? And he's like, all the evidence <laughs> seems to he's like, I know I, ha I hate to say it. And they're almost like freaking out. Like, what are they going to do? Like cut away from him? But here he is a um, he's done this thousands of times. He's a veteran U.S. Army sniper. And he said, just doesn't add up. There had to be a setup. Watch. It's, you know, I, I look at all of these things and I look at different videos where uh, an assailant will pull a firearm on a law enforcement officer. And the first thing they do is they immediately pull and draw and mitigate the threat and the risk. You know, I ask why the local law enforcement officer did not do so. Um, the other thing is, is that when you set up an advanced team, I keep hearing this about the perimeter elements. Yeah. You know, the perimeter is actually established by your threats that are in the area. So if I don't have any threats outside of 100 yards, okay, fine, I can cord on off a certain area. But if I have a building 160 yards perfectly adjacent to the stage, that's an obvious threat, especially with an elevated position that has overwatch. Mm -hmm. That's a sniper's paradise. And, you know, we talk about Eagle's Nest. You also have, which no one talks about, but the water tower. So the what I'm hearing from well. you is it's not... It, it a failure on the ground for sure, but also a failure in advance? Uh, I think it's a failure in advance. I think it's a failure to... So then he dives deeper into the setup and the water tower. It's great. It's like eight minutes long. I encourage you all to watch it. Now, earlier today, I spoke with Melody Hook, an eyewitness. She was there. She was behind Donald Trump in the bleachers with her husband and family. She saw Corey shot and killed right before her eyes. She says the official story is not true. You need, to, you need to hear this and wait until you hear what she says about the shooter's bomb making evidence and the bomb crew and the FBI who showed up to take away that evidence. Watch. The shots came from behind that red harvester that was sitting there. It didn't come from in front of it. Yes. So it didn't come from the building not that come, everyone it says it's not coming from. from. Well, see, that's just it. I, where we were, okay, we were in the bleachers. Corey was positioned over here. He was on the far side of, there was three sets of bleachers. Trump was in the middle. We were here. And then there was another set off to the other side. We were in the same set that Corey was in. So he was Corey toward, who lost his life. The, the firefighter yes. who lost his life. Yes. Yes. We were to, he was clear to the one end and we were kind of towards the other end. Like we watched the snipers go up onto the roof, get into position and, Prior to that, I said to my husband, okay, we have a five o'clock start time. You know, Trump's to speak at five o'clock. You know, what's going on here? So Trump, the snipers did not go onto the roof. I looked back on my photos last night's time. They didn't go onto the roof till 508 is the time I took pictures of them climbing up the roof on the two roofs behind us. We only saw four snipers positioned that evening. Could there have been more off that we couldn't see? Possibly but those are the only four that we saw. So they get up there, it was around 5.08 when I was recording them and they kept looking, after they got up there, they kept looking to, you know, straight ahead of them. And down below on the ground, there's like um, military. But I said to my husband kind of jokingly, I'm like, wow, seems kind of lax, like not that much presence of, you know, like, <laughs> protection right around where Trump is going to be at for somebody as big as what Trump is. I was a little bit dumbfounded. Like I, I jokingly said to my friend the day before that, she says, listen, I'm worried about you. I don't want you to go into this. There's crazies everywhere. I said, listen, we're going to the safest place. I feel we could be, there's going to be so much secret service there, blah, blah, blah. 
I said, the only thing I'm worried about is my cell phone dying because I don't know if my battery is going to last. Like just joking about it because I seriously, I felt safe. Fast forward ahead a little bit. We get to the point where it's almost time for Trump to come out and they start, you know, playing different music and everything. And music starts, Trump starts to come out. And of course, we're all focused on him. No, you, you that's who you're waiting to see. You're not going to look around at anything else around you. You're just focused on him. He comes out, like I said, he talks to my son and his, um, my friend's dad, you know, like they're young, we love you, Trump. And he stops and points at him, says, I love you too. And just calm and cool. And he goes out and interacts with some people, goes up and starts talking. And um, like, we're only a few minutes into it. Like cause he only spoke 10, nine, 10 minutes. Right. It wasn't very long. Yeah. He was speaking at all. So all of a sudden you hear like all this commotion off to our right. And it's just like, but like I said, you're at a Trump rally. It's noisy. People are not quiet at a Trump rally. So I said, I just kind of looked at my husband, gave him like this weird look. He, and at that point, I think he was more this way than Trump. Like he's starting to get, so we're just sitting there and all of a sudden you heard it. You just hear the gunshots and I'm sorry. Um, I looked down at my knees and she is, I just yelled at the boys. I said, get Riley. So they dove, they were like, just dove. They just like dog pout on top of her. They're just laying on her, covering her. There was a, a couple of kids behind us and I grabbed the little girl, just held her and I said, I got you, I got you. And I laid on top of her down in, I put her down in the bleachers and where your feet go and I'm laying on her and I just start praying like, please, God, please make sure we're okay. Save us. You know, sorry, my dog's working. I'm like, please just save us. And I, I was just trying my hardest to compose myself, but I didn't know what to do. So, um, we're all laying there and the, thing I remember the most was Riley looking up at me and just the fear in her face and the screaming. She would not stop screaming. She, and it, that's all it was. It was just pure panic. And the shots just acted like they lasted forever and they weren't stopping. And I'm telling you, I never, ever, like, it was surreal. It was just, I did not dream something like that was going to happen. I saw Corey get hit with, I saw him get shot and I yelled because you got to think this all took place within a matter of seconds, like right. seconds. And I yelled back like where we were at, the bleachers were kind of open and I yelled back at the security behind us and I yelled, he's been shot. He's been shot. And I think at this time they could all like, just everybody was stunned. Like nobody had a clue what to do or where to go. And by this time, then they come up around and our, our set of bleachers was just flooded with cops. Like right now they just come out of everywhere. Let's just put it this way where my kids were sitting at, when we look at the pictures of how the bleachers were, I don't know how it missed them because they were right in line with all of that, just the way everything was going. And yeah, and I am, I am beyond angry. I am beyond frustrated because this could have been 1000% prevented. There was nobody over there. There was nobody to watch us and there was nobody to protect us. And when you have that many people there and there's a chance of something like that, I feel you need to have more than less. 
and there was definitely not more than less that day. I, I want answers. I want to know why we were all put in such danger. Like, and I, a good friend of mine, like my phone was blowing up because so many knew we were there and a friend of mine messaged me. I don't want to say names or anything, but she messaged me and she says to me, she says, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. You know, everything's okay. We're home. And this was later that evening. This was later into the evening. And she says to me, she said, um, FBI and bomb squatter at our house. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, so I was asking her last night. I said, how far away are you from where this all took place? And she said, probably like, Oh, 10 miles, maybe, if that. They Why? found the white van. The white van was found. They, She saw them tow it from right around her location. It was right next door to her. Ten the white miles. van that was supposedly full of explosives. And that guy was supposed to have had a detonator on him. Now, you right. tell me why. He goes to all the house when he has a van full of explosives and a detonator. Why was it parked 10 miles away from the fairgrounds? 10, yeah, 10 miles. And how does, how does a man, how does a 20 year old scrawny yeah. guy in summer heat walk with a gun Ten all miles. the way from that look, 10 miles to Ten this miles. location? Exactly. What did she say the FBI and the bomb squad said to her? Did they say anything they, to her? They, all that she would tell me was that they told her that they could not leave their residence, they were to stay indoors, and they could not divulge any information. I don't care if you are, if Trump is the most, if you hate him tremendously, if you can wish evil upon somebody, you need to find your heart. I mean, we need God back in our country so bad. I... I had I went to church yesterday and prayed with our pastor after work because I don't know how to navigate this. I don't know how to be strong for my son. I don't know how to be strong for my niece. I lay down at night. I hear the screams. I hear the shots. I see all the fear in everybody's faces. I see us all laying on top of each other trying to protect each other. How do you how do you get that out of your head? Like how do I don't know how to, I don't know how to go about, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, bless her. Uh, yeah. I mean, think about you know, having to dive onto your you know child to protect her yeah. uh, in those stands. And then those people watching somebody right a few seats over from you be killed in, in Corey. Um, and, and until that moment, I hadn't considered how intimidating this is for Trump supporters as well. Who's going to feel safe now going to a rally um, and how intimidating this is for the political process. It's very discouraging for those of us think that we are exercising our right to support our candidate of choice. Right. And uh, what the repercussions are for that. Um, something that has been haunting me all day is that the Butler County Sheriff Michael Sloop said that the officer who climbed up on the roof encountered the shooter, had the gun pointed at him and then climbed right back down, said, well, that guy is not a coward. He's a hero because had he not interfered, then the bullet would have been fired sooner. President Trump would not have turned his head. And so that makes it a near miss. So that guy is a hero. But you can't have it both ways because by that logic, that guy got the fireman killed. And so you're just choosing one life for another, because by that logic, had it hit President Trump, it would have missed the innocent civilian. And so you're choosing which life to value there, which is a horrible thing to do. So I can't get on board with that. Like, oh, we just delayed the crime because isn't the job of law enforcement to stop the crime? Also, full stop. Also, it's a lie. Because we have eyewitnesses who saw that police officer climb up the ladder, climb up and yeah. confront, get you know face to face with this individual, and then fall off down mm -hmm. to the ground. Right. So not oh, there's a guy with a gun. Okay, you're you're shooting a gun. You're pointing a gun at me. Let me back off. Back off. I'm going to go back down the ladder. No, no. This person he just fell off. He just fell off the ladder onto the ground. Do you think? 
What are we surmising from that? Well, I'm saying that this this idea that he was like heroic and he's like, you better put that gun down. I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. And he bought he bought time for President Trump. Right. He saved President Trump's life because yes. he he backed up and backed up. Right. And then he then he fell. There was no reporting of that from the sheriff. He fell off the ladder, fell okay. down to the ground. But again, if you're taking credit for saving Trump, you have to take responsibility for having the fireman killed. That That's the right. only way that logic works. Right. And so then that family has now a case, in my opinion, if you've just said we saved this guy by delaying this, then you you're responsible for the death of the innocent man. I don't know. I would like to again, I, I have an appetite for consequences for all involved in this. So, uh, yeah. And the two motorcycle police officers who assisted the Trump team when they were leaving uh, and they were now suspended as a result of it because they didn't have the authority to go after and help the Trump team. So two motorcycle police officers were now also hearing reports about. So uh, I think the official story is now collapsing. And I think we need to be very skeptical when the government tells us anything. Mm -hmm. And you're having all of these eyewitnesses. And you have, for instance, Melody and her husband, who are avid hunters, who are around guns all the time. They know. And you have all of these eyewitnesses who are seeing individuals and hearing gunshots coming from a direction that was not where this building was. Why do you also have Kimberly Cheadle telling these Secret Service officers not to go on top of that rooftop? Mm -hmm. Why was there other, you know, no one else in the water tower? Right. Why were these locations not secured? Why was their security cleared out behind President Trump during the speech? All of these things. And now Kimberly Cheadle is not going to be testifying because Alejandro Mayorkas, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, doesn't want her going before Congress. Like, Really? Well, yes. and it, it'd be one thing if her story was consistent, but her saying that about the sloped roof, when that's not as sloped as where they had the snipers, like it right. that, that, make any her sense. whole logic falls apart. No, it, it never was cohesive to begin with. And I, so I, I'd, I'd almost believe it more. Natalie, we were talking about this morning. It was pretty hot that day. It would, it would almost be more believable if she said, well, it was hot that day. We didn't want these guys on a hot roof. It was cat on a hot tin roof. Cat on a hot tin roof. Actually, yeah. that's a, a redacted viewer who pointed that out. Like it yeah. was record temperatures. So it might've been hot up there and he's laying there for how long? Um, you know, his behavior seems more and more to me, almost like the imperious curse from Harry Potter. Like he was put under something doing something on someone's behalf. But I think the interest, another interesting part of this is that as this narrative crumbles, how the media continues to hold to the single narrative, right? We've seen rumblings around, it was Iran. Okay, there was a threat of Iran, but there was no increased security because of Iran. And they continue to lack curiosity about these pieces that continue to have the rug pulled out from under them. So that just makes us want to ask even more questions because we are so... We're not even a week out from the event, so we're going to continue to ask them here on Redacted. No, and I also should point out, I mean, I've said multiple times here on the show, the deep state will not allow him to become president of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. And we have, we have confirmation of this from multiple Democratic sources. Chuck Schumer speaking on behalf of the CIA, basically. Yes. You know, warning that something bad is going to happen to President Trump if he keeps needling the CIA and the deep state, basically. Victoria Nuland. Yes. Just hours before saying the same thing. So, again, they do not want him to become president of the United States, regardless of how you feel about him and how you if you feel like he's, you know, he's 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 like divinity walking in a, in a human body. But nevertheless, the deep state is not happy with him. They do not want him to be president of the United States. And they absolutely fear that he comes in and he wipes them clean and he shuts them down. That's their greatest fear, that he ends their jobs. Yes. Um, so we'll have more on this. We're going to continue to follow the story and we're going to continue to look deeper into a lot of the questions that still need answering. And we hope that we get them, um, but we will follow that.